Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss X, Y, and Z calibration and if it's needed or not. All right, stay tuned. Hey everyone, it's Jeff back in the corner and we're going to talk about X, Y, Z calibration. We've done extruder calibration before um, and that leaves us with our other axes, axi, axes. You know, we got our um, Y axis, which moves our printer back and forth. Um, our X axis, which goes side to side. And our Z axis, which goes up and down. Now, Tom Sandlander has a great video on the pros and cons of that sort of calibration. He gives a pretty good explanation, so I'll link that video down below. Um, but basically, do you need to calibrate your X, Y, and Z? Probably the only time you need to calibrate your X, Y, and Z is if you've changed firmwares or you've like rebuilt your hot end or rebuilt part of your printer, something that's going to be a drastic change to your printing environment. Then you might want to have a look at it and see if your print results are being consistent. And by consistent, I mean everyone knows these little cubes, right? These little X, Y, and Z cubes that are supposed to be 20 mil test cubes. Um, so when you print these out, if you have a significant change in um, your X, your Y, or your Z, it might be a calibration problem with your steps. However, more than likely, it's a problem with the mechanical part of your printer, how it's built, how it's set up. Um, like example, let's look at your, your Z axis. Some have one, some have dual Zs. Um, now, basically the motors are all synced to spin at a certain rate and the, the threaded rods, they're, the, I'm not an engineer, but because they're all threaded all the way up, they turn at a certain speed, which, brings the Z up and down at a certain rate. That's all controlled by your motherboard, your steppers, and your slicer. Now, um, printers have gotten better over time. Um, you don't have to do as much calibration. Most of them are pretty much ready to print good and decent quality prints right out of the box. But you're gonna run into every once in a while where something's gonna go funky and you might wanna try to calibrate your X, Y, and Z. So all that being said, I am going to do two forms of calibration. I am going to do a classic calibration with a cube. Now this is a 20 mil cube. I just prefer to use a 40 mil cube when I do this because, well, I get a larger scale of measurement. So I can actually, instead of like when you measure this, you might be 19.99. This one, you might be 19. Point nine six or whatever so you'll have a bit of a, a variance there and two i found this model on thingiverse which i thought would be an interesting little test it's called a calibration cross and what you would do with this is you would print this out on your printer and then you would measure all of these little steps here and it comes with a excel spreadsheet so you would type in all these numbers and it would spit out what you sh after you put in your steps what your new steps should be and to try it out so I thought that would be interesting that just have a look at that and stuff it also comes with a Z calibration which is a tower and it's got the steps on it too you would do the same thing measure them and whatnot so I thought I would do that um, and uh, the calibration cube so to speak, the larger one, the 40 mil. So I'm gonna do this on two printers. I'm gonna do this on my Tronxy and I'm gonna do this on my Anycubic Chiron right over here. So in order to do this, I guess I need a before and after or a control. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have printed already um, a 40 mil cube on my Chiron and a 40 mil cube off of my Tronxy. Now, when you pull these off the bed, uh, this was my Tronxy one. 
and you can pretty much tell the um, the Z axis from your you know your your first level and so on and then your, your layer lines going up so you can tell that but your X and your Y unless you mark them you can get them confused but what I did with this was I put the seam at the back I don't know if you can see that so because I put the seam at the back there it is I know this is the back so this would be my X and this would be my Y here with the trunks or with the Chiron I actually labeled it so <laughs> I know what's going on right <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure those off first come up with that number then we're gonna um, do the math on it so it would be these are 40 mil cubes so it would be 40 divided by whatever number I get 39 point say 9 that comes up with my factor to times by whatever my my steps are for that particular axis. Axis? It is axis, isn't it? Is that the multiple? Anybody? Uh, what is plural of axis? Put it down below, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, so let's do that. Please forgive my writing, but I took my two cubes and I did, this was my Tronxy start and this was my Chiron start, okay? And they're pretty close. Like the Tronxy, I'm like at 39.8, 39.97, 39 39.85. I wouldn't even mess with my Tronxy, to be honest with you. I would just let it sort of do its own thing. Now the Chiron is 39.78, 39.78, and 39.92. So again, it is <clears throat> very, very, very close. But just for the sake of this video, I am going to try and get these closer. Now, what I was saying, here, here's a good example. Um, I've been playing around with this a little bit, and here's a beautiful cube, except for I actually went 10% lower on my uh, my y-axis, just to see. If you see that, it's actually, I don't know, here, I'll put it up against this one so you can actually see. It's a nice rectangle shape, right? <laughs> so that's just an example of if your printer is printing a square and you're getting a rectangle shape, you kind of want to, um, you know, calibrate some stuff, okay? All right, so I'm going to go onto the computer now, and I'm going to input all these numbers into that spreadsheet, and I'm going to come back and do this. Okay, so I've run my test and I have my new E steps for my Tronxy. Um, well, my new X, Y, and Z steps anyways, not my E steps. So I'm gonna go uh, configuration, advanced settings, um, and steps. Now my X steps are supposed to be 159.96. was it 96? So I'm going off by one, literally. Oh dear. And my Y is 159.79. So 159.8 sounds good. And my Z is 795.41. So 795.4. Can I get four? There we go. All right. And now we're going to um, print the 40 mil cube again. See if we get closer. Now we'll do the Chiron. So I have my Chiron hooked up to Pronterface. 
Um, I'll do this a little old school. I don't have my laptop hooked up to camera uh, motion capture yet, but I'm gonna enter an M503 command, and we're gonna look for the um, the M92, which is right here, and that gives me all my E steps. So I'm going to write those down. So I've finished the calibration cross, inputting everything into the spreadsheet, um, and it spat out my new numbers. Now, my old numbers were X was 160, Y was 160, and Z was 800. My new numbers are um, 159.96 on the X, 159.79 on the Y, and 170 or 195.41 on the Z. Now, this is kind of my problem, is that I already know that these are my old numbers. My numbers actually for this looks like they were a bit smaller than the actual size. Like I wanted um, five mils or, or 10 mils here, I got 9.97, 15, I got 14.97, nine, or 20 mils, I got 19.89. So I'm printing slightly smaller. And I found that out when I actually did my cube two, I was at 39.8 and 39.97 and 39.85. So my cube's coming out a bit smaller. But the steps that that program was giving me, now I might be doing it wrong, I don't know. Um, I followed the instructions the best I could. Maybe you'll have better luck with it. I thought it was interesting to try. Um, but the steps that they gave me were smaller than my E steps. Now, if I wanted the cube to be slightly bigger, I would think it would be bigger. Because with my Chiron, that's exactly what happened, was um, I went from my smaller steps, where are they here? I wrote all this down so you can see. Um, my smaller steps, where did I come? now I can't find them, ha! Huh. Oh, there we go, okay. So yeah, my Chiron was 80, 100, and 400 for the X, the Y, and the Z. And it ended up being something like 80.2, 100.4, and 400.5 or something like that. So, um, here's my tester. As I said, with, um, let's just check the Y on the tester here. So, I don't know if you can read here. This is what I'll do. Here. So, we'll go like this. All right. So, this is the tester. All right, and this is my new one. Now that was my, so this is my Y, <laughs> okay. I got a 3987 here, and this is my new one here, 39.99. And again, as I said, it depends on if you're squeezing your calipers or whatnot, you kind of want to be gentle with them to figure it out. Okay, and my X, 39.88, and my X, 40.8. Now then, you notice that I didn't measure my, my, uh, my Z. Now, the reason why I didn't measure my Z is, well, one, it's pretty darn close and I'm okay with that. I'll do that right now for you. But Z brings another thing into play. This is 39.87 for the uh, original cube and the new one is at, um, where is it? 39, I got 99 nine there. So like, um, but the reason why I wasn't, the Z is a different animal altogether because depending on, um, if you have squish, so an elephant's foot, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. So I didn't really want to um, do that, but 
just proof of concept, you can adjust your X, Y, and Z using the same calibration that you did, uh, or a very similar calibration that you did with your E-steps. Uh, all right, so to sum this up, if you're doing like a single part model, right out of the box, it's going to be great. It's going to look okay. You know, you're within a couple of what thousandths of a millimeter or a tenth of a millimeter. You're going to be fine, right? Like you're going to come up with a single piece model. It's going to look great. Um, if you're off by a little bit though, if you're printing a multi piece model that you have to put together, like, um, hang on. Here. Um, Show you this. So this is a short trooper helmet, right? Um, you see how the the top of the dome is three pieces, and see how there's a seam in the middle there. That's another couple pieces, and then there's one, two seams down here. That's another few pieces. So this is um, that's a multi-piece model. Now, if you're printing a multi-piece model, and you're off by say, you know. A tenth of a millimeter every 10 millimeters you print then by the time you get like a standard beds what about 200 by 200 you, you print something that's the full size of the bed you're gonna be off by a couple millimeters so trying to piece those pieces together they may not fit right and especially if you're printing a multi-piece model on several different printers and they're all calibrated slightly differently you're going to have that problem. But again, if it ain't broke and you're getting decent prints out of something and this is what you want to do, it's great. You know, do it. It's awesome. Don't mess with something that you you don't need to, right? I just did this as a... I, I saw the calibration cross. I thought it would be a cool little thing to show you. It had a spreadsheet with it and stuff, but... Going over it, it looks like I, I couldn't get it to work properly. I um, Maybe I didn't follow the instructions properly, but when I put my numbers in, it gave me numbers back that were smaller. Um, if anybody has an explanation for this or want to look at it and try and figure it out for me, leave a comment below how you thought it worked. Um, I did the basic um, measure the cube and adjust the um, your steps calibration, and that seemed to work much better for me. And I, again, I don't want to say it's all about me, <laughs> but you know, this is what works for me. It may not work specifically for you and you're not going to need to do it most of the time. But if you're printing a cube and it comes out like a rectangle, you might have a problem and this might be somewhere you need to look at. All right. So I want to thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope gave you food for thought um if you liked it you know give me a thumbs up you know if this is your first time visiting the channel i got some other videos out there that might interest you hit subscribe leave a comment anybody want me to try anything slightly different or do anything you know just um let me know okay so thanks a lot guys peace out